Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tanil and myself take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sean Whitney. And I'm Tanil. And today we are taking a look at the two-hour space opera from Japan, Toei of Japan specifically, <laughs> Cyborg 009, Legend of the Super Galaxy. So you know those uh, movies way, way back the, the, the Cyborg 009 movies? Well, they're back, sort they're, of. They're back. And they had to go to space, because uh, why would you not? <laughs> Every, everybody's going to space now. That's what the cool kids do. Just, you go to space. Yep. Curse the not sudden yet inevitable journey into space movies. <laughs> is the first thing I wrote in my notes. Curse the two hour long timeline that they feel that these movies need to take up. That's really my biggest complaint. Because uh, they don't. Yeah, they really wow. don't. You know, I just realized I left an entire subplot section of the movie out because I forgot it existed. Probably because it didn't matter. It didn't. Yeah. But it took up like an entire half hour of the movie. So, long story short, we didn't really care for this film, but Whitney, do you want to enlighten us on what the plot of this was? So, in case you're not aware of it, there's a group of nine superheroes. We've already watched two movies mm -hmm. in this franchise, and there's been an anime and a manga and all that stuff. But the basic plot of those is that, like, there are these cyborg people who... Made by a good doctor, but was forced to make them because of evil reasons... But now they it's save It's a very people. Mega Man X situation. <laughs> you don't need to add X. It's just Mega Man. Mega Man situation. Yes. A Mega Astro Man or Boy. Astro Boy. Yeah. Pe people die or almost die and then they get turned into half cyborgs. cyborgs and they all have special abilities. Uh, this Most one, of them don't matter. This one, though, is particularly tokenism-y. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, because like... You got and by tokenism, tokenism -y, I mean racist. Because <laughs> you got the African guy who can swim good and he does like one thing in the whole movie. Otherwise, that's he just stands racist. in the back. Like, that's not racist in and of itself, other than the fact no, that no, no. Like, he doesn't do anything. The oh, the Chinese part, guy is really racist. The Chinese guy is really racist. But no, the, the, the black guy is definitely more so racist just because he is a caricature. And they keep decide, like they keep trying to change how he looks e to every, be less of a caricature, but it's always bad. Every iteration of this franchise, he looks different because they're like, how do we make it look less racist? Is that better? I think so. I don't know. It's the 80s. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, there's also the Native American guy. Oh. He exists. He's just there. And he's really big and strong. And that's like, that's all he does. Yeah. Because they all have like one power except for 009, who's just good at everything, which is why he's in charge. Mm hmm. Anyways. The Chinese guy speaks with a thick Chinese accent and at least, breathes fire. Yeah, at least the talking part is in the dub that we watch because we did yeah. have to watch this in a dub mm -hmm. and so the american dub of it is very bad yeah uh one change i noticed is that the one that can change and look like anything they want isn't a child anymore and now they're just like another guy and he's i mean he's bald still but like he's just and he a dude. used to be an english kid but in this dub for whatever reason he was scottish I think he was supposed to be Irish, but the accent that they used was real bad. Was not Scottish or Irish. No, it, it was just kind of. I've got an accent, eh? <laughs> it like, was like if that's, you tried to do an like, accent. Like it's literally that bad of an accent. Yeah. Like, oh, are you supposed to be putting on an accent? Whatever. Okay. Sure. So anyways, anyways, these are our heroes. Plus there's tokenism of girl. Yeah, there's girl that can see good and hear good. That's her power. That's her superpower. There's also psychic prophetic baby who has... But he spends most around. of the movie as being kidnapped, so whatever. Exactly. He notices that there's an alien threat that's coming. And there's a, sci a different scientist is like, you know, I think there's a thing called a super galaxy out there that if you could harness it, you'd have unlimited energy. It's the MacGuffin that everybody's after. And then the psychic baby is like, oh my God, there's an evil force about to attack. 
Wouldn't you know it, the evil force attacks and kidnaps the baby and that scientist who knows about the super galaxy because he wants the super galaxy. Mm -hmm. Also, an alien kid shows up with a spaceship from a different planet that got attacked by this bad guy and is like, my entire race has been wiped out. I need your help because... Thanks, help me. <laughs> help me, please. Help Although, me take out like, the bad guy. Like he it's tries. It's already like everybody's already dead, so like it's it's kind of too little, too late. Buddy. Yeah, but he wants help taking down the bad guy, yeah, which is understandable. So look, they have a spaceship. They didn't even have to like build one or anything. They just have a spaceship and a new space kid to like tell them where to go. And so they do that. They go out and they have space adventures. You know, like dodging asteroids and i gotta say too warping the, the the spaceship is a dumb looking yamato it it's like jade green and it looks like it's supposed to be like a half built like ancient japanese arc but it's not completely done so it it, it looks kind of it looks, it, it looks really silly okay it it, looks uh, i can't i can't get around it it's a very silly looking ship Space adventures include them going through an astro field where, for some reason, the bad guys knew that they would be going through this specific asteroid belt, so they put mines in all the asteroids so that they can't blow up the asteroids so they have to, to get through, so they have through. to go through the asteroid belt, Eventually but then they... they blow it up anyway, so it doesn't matter. I mean, they do get... Because of that, their ship gets damaged, so they land on a a planet, mm -hmm. and then this is the plot that I forgot to write down. You forgot to write down the plot about the planet? Yeah, I know. It's like the most interesting thing that happens in this movie, and I forgot about it. Okay? <laughs> they land on a planet. This planet's already been destroyed by the evil bad guys, and now all the local people have reverted to using spears and bows. Cool, thanks. The, uh. the, the, the cyborgs... In particular, comment about how, like, why have these people gone back to their savage ways? And just like, Ugh. Wow, can you not use words like that? Yeah. Anyways, there's a purple princess lady that tell, like, psychically speaks to them and like, hey, help me. So they go and they help her out of, like, a, a, a piece of jewelry on a giant robot who was terrorizing the planet. And Man, then, you're right. This plot doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all because as soon as they get her out, she's like, help me rebuild my planet and help my people. And then the bad guys show up and kill everyone, including the princess, so it did not matter. Except we had a 30 minute love interest for Cyborg 009 because him and the girl of obviously are supposed to be like a thing. Uh huh. So anyways, she, well, she and dies and They've it been matter. going through this like mini conflict where he like I don't want you to come along because you're girl. Girl and might you get might hurt. get hurt. But then you know he kind of has this like little, f little, little fling with the you know other planet princess lady. But then she's like, "Um, Cyborg Zero Zero Nine, uh, why don't everyone else leave but you just stay? You stay with me. Stay with me." And he's like, "Thank then, you for asking to stay." And then. She dies, and she's like, oh, Cyborg 009, I deserve this. I was being selfish. Ugh. It's real dumb. And that's it. That entire plot doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They fix their ship, and they go on. And then they have a neat thing where they try to sneak up on the bad guy's Death Star, because he has a Death Star. Everybody has a Death Star now. Uh... It's you get a Death Star. You get a Death Star. Everyone gets a Death Star. Yay! So the cyborgs, because the robots, decide they're going to sneak up by coming in from in front of, like, a different planet mm -hmm. and syncing their heartbeats with the pulse from this planet star thingy, which, I mean, obviously doesn't make any sense in reality, but, like, yeah, it's a neat idea, I guess. They're cyborgs, so at least they did something with that because, okay... This is the biggest thing I have to say about this movie. It makes no sense to send these cyborgs into space. Because they don't have powers that are useful when flying a ship or right. being in space. They're, like So many of the cyborgs have powers that are kind of specific to Earth. Like one guy is 
can fly. One guy can fly. One guy can swim. I mean, the flying guy, that's applicable in any location. Not really in space. Yeah, like, like if you go to other planets, you can use flying. That's a thing you can do. The other guy, one of the guys is gone. But not if you're in a spaceship. Okay, if you're in a spaceship, yes, that obviously doesn't do anything. One guy is strong, and he does that, like, once in the whole movie. Yeah. One guy can swim real good. He does it once on Earth, and then he just kind of stands around with a gun. Even our protagonist, he has, like... I don't know. Good reflexes. Heightened reflexes. That's literally his ability. Like, that's not really applicable on a spaceship. Mm -hmm. He's, and he's like the captain of the ship. But, like, why? Like, he doesn't have any space training. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know how to pilot a ship. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Oh, but you see, he drives. Race cars. race cars. So he knows how spaceships work. Yeah, because that was his that was his career before he became a cyborg. Was he was like mm -hmm. a speed racer. I mean, yes. <laughs> Anyways, he was uh, a go speed racer. Go. Two two of the characters, uh, the, the gun cyborg and the flying bird cyborg, are total bros. Yeah, Absolute yeah. bros, like bros that would probably kiss mm -hmm. uh, type of bros. They're that tight. They're just like, yeah, we're bros. Gun bro goes on this mission to save the scientists and the kid and whatever on the Death Star. And he does a suicide play where he explodinates himself to take out the entire Death Star. Mm -hmm. And Bird Turns bro out he's rigged himself with like a, bomb. A, a nuclear bomb. Oh, yeah, of course, as, as you do. <laughs> uh, so when and they he's get... he's kind of been planning this since the beginning. So... Uh, Bird Bro is real sad and actually cries. So, like, you get a guy crying on screen. Good. That doesn't happen a whole lot. I'm really kind of pissed off, though, that nobody else cries mm -hmm. but the girl. Yeah. And Bird Bro. Yeah. It would be nice if others, like, you see a couple of them, like, looking really... Like, the others look sad and dejected, but no actual tears from anybody uh -huh. else. Anyways, the It's just one of those little things. It's like, really? Really? Mm -hmm. Can we not show the others crying? The main bad guy has escaped and he's gone to the super galaxy because he's going to fuse with it and have ultimate power over the universe. Mm -hmm. So the good guys follow. And then I got really confused about what happened. But the main character also does this, gets fused into the super galaxy. The plot goes falls apart. Yeah, it like builds, 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 builds. And then... It falls completely apart. There's a lot of flashy scenes going on but i could not follow what the hell happened but they explain what happened after the fact whitney and i were literally what like and okay we checked out during most of this film because it was so boring and we've watched two really long space operas back to back yeah so we're checked out for the most part but we're like following what's going on mm -hmm. it gets to this part and we're like wait, wait what happened did i miss did, something did we miss what is is Cyborg 009 dead? Because he fuses with the super galaxy and now he's super glowing and if you touch him, you die. And then they're suddenly back at Earth because he wished real hard, apparently. And then we're told that he also, while both him and the bad guy were fused with the super gal galaxy, he wished that the other guy would die. And so the other guy died. <laughs> and then they're back at Earth. And so <laughs> the... Conflict resolved, I guess. And then well, they and then bury... All... Hold on, hold on. They bury... <laughs> like, make a grave for zero, 00 Gun. I don't remember what number he is. I think he was like four, four or something. Four, I think. Uh, and they're like, oh, this is really sad and stuff. And then Z uh, zero, 00 Gun walks up and like, hey, what's going on? Uh, turns out you wished me back to life. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> because I was totally cool with dying because I was kind of sick of being a cyborg. But you know what? I'm okay with being a cyborg now, probably because you changed my mind when you wished me back. Well, no, no, that, no. That's how I... He, he says... Okay, no, no, no. He gets wished back as a human. And he wants the doctor to make him a cyborg again. Wait, what? Yes. That's what he, he said? He doesn't have gun hands anymore. No, he did. No, he didn't. He didn't? No, he didn't. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he lost his gun hands and he's like, I want to be a cyborg again. It's so stupid, dude. <laughs> Now you're making me question that. I thought he still had gun hands. No. I thought he was back as no, a cyborg. No, I think his hands were back to normal. Because normally he had like the... Segmented The, the segmented digits, but at the end he doesn't. 
he's a guy. But or he still least... doesn't have eyeballs. No, he still doesn't have eyeballs. I, 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 the way I read that, the way it was playing out, he got wished back as a human, and he's like, I want to be a cyborg. Well, how I read it is he got wished back as a cyborg, and he's like, you know what? I'm okay with being a cyborg because at least I'm alive, and I'm used to living life like this or something. He Well, he's like, I've got nothing else better to be than a cyborg. Yeah. Essentially. Uh-huh. Because them all being cyborgs is like a tortured past how... We've been put through all this terribleness of being a cyborg. Right. It's just a shared... They're, it's their shared tra- trauma. Sh- shared trauma, which, yeah. like, fair. So either way, it doesn't matter. He's back, uh-huh. and, like, h- him and Bird Bro can be bros again. You know what our protagonist doesn't wish for, apparently? Uh, the purple lady or her uh, planet being saved. Or, or, or the child, like... Or the child and his planet to be saved or anything. No. No, they're just still dead. He's like, F you got my... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god, this was so damn. This was bad. So, like, the idea with the heartbeat and actually playing up the fact that they're robots, I think that was, like, a neat idea. That was actually, like, I think my favorite animation animation moment from this film. Because, like, they even have a moment where they're flying to <laughs> the, the Death Get Star. Get position, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, they're going and, like, the, the, the lady, 003, is like, oh. And she has, like, this moment where she kind of, like, quavers. And then the others are kind of like, oh, it's so like their heartbeat kind of like spikes a little bit and then mm-hmm. they have to bring it back down. And like, it's not much, but it was the only time in this film where I felt a connection to the characters and felt that they had some kind of camaraderie with each other and like they cared about each other. And like, it was just a, a nice bit of character animation to make you a little bit invested in them. And yeah. normally, I don't feel that at all for these characters. Like, sure, the characters stand around and make jokes at each other's expenses constantly. <sighs> Writers need to realize that characters being assholes to each other, but you never see them like actually getting along, does not make for immediate like oh wow they must be friends because they just get on each other's nerves all the time like no we need to actually see them be friends too it can't just be quippy quips unless you're going for a like a specific dynamic where like at guardians of the galaxy where they are all assholes to each other and like that's the thing Mm -hmm. but you know, when you actually are trying to make a group that's like, no, the power of friendship's going to win the day. Like, you need to actually show that they like each other and they worry about each other. Mm-hmm. Which is why Gun and Bird actually work yes. here. Because they do care about each other. And- yeah, and he's devastated when he hears about Gun. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah. I don't know. Probably don't watch this one. No. Um. Anyway, so talking a little bit about, you know this movie and its production. Uh, This is the third film in this franchise. We're still going to be seeing more Cyborg 009 in the future because this has been a long lasting franchise, you know, ever since it started. But this movie was made after the sudden cancellation of the anime in 1979. However, it is unconnected from the anime series. So this is not like a finale or anything like that, which we suspected because like they were kind of p- playing fast and loose with the characters. like And just like killing people off. I'm like, oh, this, so it's like a finale or something. Yeah, it's not. Okay. And th- another reason why but we it does thought... Have that char- but it has the character designs from that show, right? I don't know. Like, I'm not positive because they... Or is this just its own standalone thing? It feels like it's its own standalone thing, which feels weird because it feels like some of the things that the characters say are like, oh, that's just, you know, gun being gun. Mm -hmm. And like, it feels like, you know, maybe it was trying to do like fan service for that. But I think it's just kind of its own thing where like it was based off the manga and then made into a movie kind of thing. 
Huh. Well, um, okay. There was quite a bit of studio intervention on like what exactly the plot could be, and I can only guess that the studio wanted it to be more like Space Battleship Yamato. Because like this feels very much so like the original Yamato. Uh-huh. And then also Star Wars. Yes. Because why not? Another thing is the director of this film is Masayuki Akeki. Akeki? Is that a K? A K? I don't know. I'm going to have to look it up because you it looks like an H or a K. No, no, that's an H. It's A-K-E-H-I. Akahi. Akahi. Yeah, that sounds right. Akahi. Is, yeah. Is probably more correctly. I, I hope I'm not putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable, but that <laughs> happens a lot with Japanese and me. Yeah. <laughs> and me. Um, but well, originally, uh, the director that they wanted for this film was Rintaro who was the director for Galaxy Express Triple Nine, which... Who is also the the creator of Galaxy Express 3-9, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Don't get him. <laughs> Don't get him. But, I mean, if he was involved at all in the making of this film, I will say that the other planet where there's the lady who there's falls There's the one love. girl. Yeah, I'm like, that kind of makes sense. But also, like, I don't know if that was just, you know, someone being like, well, why don't we just make it like this? Because this director likes these things, you know? Like, it, it feels very much like because this guy uh, was involved in the project, we have this plot. We have a plot element where a single char female character shows up and she's lonely, but at the top, and she needs help with her job, and then she loves the main character and dies. Eh. Yeah. Because that's just all because he writes. Because she was being selfish. God. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. That's a perfect segue, because join us back here next time as we watch a movie all about a woman being incredibly selfish to the expense of others. We're going to be watching Bloody Lady... Ooh. Czechoslovakia. Oh, I'm actually excited. Okay. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Japan. <laughs> Let's watch some other movies now. See you then. <laughs>